Greetings traders and welcome back to another survival guide. Chris here bringing you some more information. Today we're going to be talking about portfolio diversification. A lot of rhyming going on today and with that we're going to cover exactly what it is, how it works, and why you should probably consider it yourself. But without further ado, let's get going through our disclaimer so we can jump into that juicy material. But before we do, if you haven't already, please click that like and subscribe button down below. It allows me to keep coming out with these videos for you guys. Let's get to it. Portfolio diversification is an important concept in investing and has been used by financial planners for some time in order to mitigate risk. But what really is it? Well, it is a strategy per se of combining different securities to reduce the overall investment of a portfolio's inherent risk. Diversification can mitigate the risk and volatility in a portfolio by reducing the number and severity of the ups and downs that that the portfolio may experience. A key variable in portfolio diversification is what is called correlation. Finding assets with relatively low correlation to equities and bonds is one key consideration of portfolio managers and financial planners all around the world. However, portfolio diversification is not something that will simply guarantee profit or always protect against loss, but when done correctly can absolutely aid in those categories. Let's take a moment to talk about the word correlation. The correlation coefficient is a measure of how closely related two data series are. It measures the direction and extent of linear association between the two variables. Positive linear association between two variables occurs when the correlation coefficient is greater than zero. Negative linear association occurs when the correlation coefficient is less than zero. This is a way to describe how closely related the price path of two assets are. The coefficient can have a maximum value of 1 and a minimum value of negative 1. Financial investment may have high, low, or no correlation at all when comparing two assets. Investing in securities with low or no correlation in a portfolio helps in constructing a diversified investment portfolio as a general concept. However, correlation is not necessarily causation. If A is positively correlated, with B, it could mean that A explains B, B explains A, or there could be a spurious correlation in general. Further analysis should always be carried out. The correlation of investments can fluctuate along short-term or long-term periods. It is important to understand the correlation of a portfolio's investments in the context of volatility. In a period of high market volatility, such as an economic downturn, correlations may move towards positive coefficient and investments may follow the downturn. The purpose of portfolio diversification is portfolio risk management at the core. A well-diversified portfolio will reduce the volatility of a portfolio because not all the investments are going to be moving in the same direction together. Therefore, holding a variety of low or no correlation assets can reduce unsystematic risk. An investing strategy that holds investments across asset classes like equities, fixed income, commodities, and alternative investments like futures and forwards is less less likely to experience a severe loss relative to a non-diversified portfolio. Diversification could also be achieved within an asset class across geographical regions, currencies, and timeframes as well. Diversified portfolios can have a lower exposure to risk, as we were discussing, but they can also improve portfolio stability and earning potential. To build a diversified portfolio, one should have a clear understanding of our investment goals as well as our risk tolerance. If we are investing with the main objective to accumulate wealth for a retirement period, we could have a risk objective in a time period different than someone who is investing for a short-term gain in the market. Here we have the two main concepts why portfolio diversification 
is a desirable outcome for most, and the first is risk management. Risk reduction is a key principle of portfolio diversification and different types of risk impact portfolio construction and wealth building capacities. Unsystematic risk, also known as diversifiable risk, is related to a specific asset class or sub-asset class. Such risks may include company-specific risks, sector risk, industry risk, or risk within a financial system itself. To reduce the risk of loss from unsystematic risk, an investor's portfolio strategy should be to diversify across investments that do not share the same unsystematic risks. This could limit losses from a particular company, asset class, region, or industry, and at the same time may increase earning potential in a portfolio by increasing the portfolio efficiency overall. Systematic risk is inherited in the market as a whole, and such risk could be things like interest rates and inflation. It is difficult to predict economic recessions or inflation, but holding a diversified portfolio in the long run can reduce losses in case of any of these events materializing. Beta coefficient can also help in measuring the degree of systematic risk of a particular investment. It measures systematic risk of an investment or a portfolio relative to the market as a whole. Diversifying across investments with lower betas may help in reducing some type of systematic risk. Then we have the higher potential return aspect. A diversified portfolio may increase stability in the portfolio in terms of risk. A more stable investment portfolio may result in a better portfolio return overall. It should be noted that portfolio diversification doesn't eliminate the risk entirely, but when it's structured well, it can earn better risk-adjusted returns in the long run. The Markowitz Modern Portfolio Theory is a common approach and strategy when traders are looking to diversify their portfolio. It was introduced by Harry Markowitz in 1952 and is one of the most famous portfolio diversification strategies that traders are still using today. The basic premise of the theory is structuring an investment portfolio to maximize return at a given level of the risk curve of the efficient frontier. This is also known as the Mean Variance Framework, otherwise MVO. This was developed once again by Markowitz. All portfolios that fall below the curve of the frontier, as you can see here, are considered not investable due to taking more risk for the same level of return. According to Markowitz, an efficient portfolio is one that lies along the efficient curve and represents all efficient portfolios. Markowitz recognized that adding assets in a portfolio with low or no correlation reduced risk, measured by standard deviation, of course, by more than just the weighted average risk of the assets themselves. Therefore, mean variance optimization is a model for determining the right mix of assets to achieve a desirable expected return on a portfolio given a level of risk. MVO is widely understood and enables an investor to identify portfolios with the best risk return trade-off, also referred to as the SHARP ratio. Therefore, this asset allocation approach may set optimal diversification levels for a portfolio for those of you that are looking for a strategy to follow along. If you are interested in diversifying, then you'll be happy to hear that there's really no shortage of assets to choose from. Portfolio construction could have different asset classes as a mean of diversification just by itself. An asset class is a group of securities that share similar characteristics and behavior. There is a loss of diverse asset classes that could be further broken down into subclasses. But in general, a portfolio with a broader mix of asset classes will have have broader diversification. And some of these major asset classes include equities, fixed income, cash, cash equivalents, and alternative investments. With equities, stocks represent one of the riskiest asset classes and provide the opportunity for higher growth over the long term. However, in short term, stocks carry greater risk due to market fluctuations. Equities in portfolio provide diversification when combined with other assets. Moreover, equities increase in prices, offering capital appreciation, provide income in the form of dividends, and could serve as a hedge against inflation. Then with fixed income, 
Globally, fixed income represents one of the largest asset classes in financial markets. Fixed income investments provide diversification in a portfolio and provide a protection against inflation as well. Diversification in an equity and fixed income portfolio is generally higher due to lower correlation between these two asset classes. Then with cash and cash equivalents, these include money market funds and short-term investments such as a time deposit in a bank account. Money market funds are low return assets that can be liquidated rather quick to obtain the cash. Due to relatively lower risk of money market funds and time deposit, the returns are relatively low in this category. And then we have alternative investments. Alternative investments have different risk and return characteristics which differ from those of traditional stock and and bond investments. Examples of alternative investments could include futures and forwards, private equity, hedge funds, real estate, commodities, and even private credit. These investments are perceived as long-term assets that may require investors to have a longer-term horizon. Let's talk about building a portfolio diversification strategy. Investing is a dynamic process that requires regular adjustments and modifications as market conditions change. A proper investment strategy and process is important to have a diversified portfolio. To build a portfolio diversification strategy, there are three substantial steps of importance, and they can be summed up with create an investment plan, invest according to the plan, and manage the investment plan. With create an investment plan, this is a tailored investment plan that should be crafted, defining goals, time horizon, and risk tolerance should all be crucial in this step. Then with investing according to the plan, after defining our goals, risk capacity, the time horizon, choosing a mix of asset classes that are considered appropriate for achieving those goals is the next step. A balanced allocation between asset classes should be achieved in order to build a diversified portfolio. Once the right mix of asset classes is selected, then implementation can be executed. And here we have manage the investment plan. Portfolio monitoring is a regular step in portfolio management. Maintaining a portfolio according to the investment plan involves monitoring, which is when we're evaluating portfolio performance and risk periodically for changes in any strategy. And we have rebalancing, which is when portfolio allocation may drift from the investment plan due to price movements as a result of market performance. Rebalancing may be needed to reset the portfolio according to our original investment plan. Rebalancing may be done in a systematic or discretionary way, depending on the investment strategy. And then finally, we have the revisit the investment plan portion of this. And this is advisable that at least once a year we do this, or when financial goals and risk tolerance change. The investment plan should be revisited to ensure it still answers the investor's goals and risk tolerance, because after all, we are all different and all of our goals are different. When constructing a diversified investment portfolio, investors should have optimal asset classes and number of investments in the portfolio according to the investment objectives. Investors can easily over-diversify their portfolio by including many investments and funds, but this does not lead to an optimal outcome. Over-diversifying will lead to a loss of returns that could exceed the benefit of reducing the risks, so we don't want to overdo it. When adding low or negative correlation investments in a portfolio, each investment reduces the portfolio risk, but also reduces the expected return. The optimal number of investments in the portfolio should be enough to eliminate the unsystematic risk, but yet have investment in the best securities with the highest potential of increasing returns. Another potential mistake that traders make when diversifying is to do it just for the sake of diversification. It should be clear that diversification should be part of a portfolio strategy and construction. However, we don't want to make investments in weak securities solely for diversification. Investing in low quality sectors or asset classes will not necessarily improve our portfolio diversification process or our returns. The herding behavior that traders develop is defined in a broad way as an investor following the investment behavior of a crowd, and this is another mistake when diversifying a portfolio. Chasing hot sectors or markets may drift investors from investment planning and portfolio strategy, thus hurting portfolio diversification. Trends in markets come and go, and investors may hurt their portfolio by following the herd style behavior blindly. 
In conclusion, a diversified portfolio is a means to help you reach your goals when you personalize it for you. The traditional method of doing a 60-40 ratio of equities and bonds has long since been under scrutiny. And realistically, the most successful portfolio strategy is gonna be one that's tailored specifically to your needs. As long as you understand the concepts and the goals and the benefits that can be provided by having a diversified portfolio and by doing it correctly, then at that point, it's really up to you to decide exactly how you wanna do it. I strongly encourage spending a little bit more time checking out the possible outcomes out there for you and see if it fits your trading style. But until next time, folks, I will see you soon. Please click that like and subscribe button before you go, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers, folks.